time to check in, presented by Allstate with the great Paul Feinbaum, as we do each and every Sunday morning. Okay, Paul, we didn't think we'd get another crazy weekend, and lo and behold, here we have it, heading into Thanksgiving week. Here's where I'd like to start. We're going to go in chronological order with the time that the game happened. I'm going to start in the noon window, Ole Miss, Florida. What happened? Well, unfortunately, uh, Ole Miss found a hot team and and just simply looked uh, like they did against Kentucky about two months ago. And yeah, I feel badly because we sat here two weeks ago, you know, praising Lane Kiffin, you know, finally winning the biggest game of his career. And now he has lost the biggest game of his career because uh, clearly knocked them out of the playoffs. I don't see they they played. uh, Listen, I mean, it came down to the final couple of seconds. So it wasn't like they only scored three points and got rolled over. I know we'll get to that game in a few minutes, uh, but I, I don't see them coming back. And and it's, it's the, the real unfortunate thing is this is the best Ole Miss team uh, the, in 60 years. It, it's, it was Lane Kiffin's best shot. And if he can't win with these guys, that you have to ask the question, who can he win with? Yeah. So that's where I want to hang out. I want to hang out in that zip code for a minute because we sat on here last week and said that that Ole Miss team, there's a version of Ole Miss out there that can beat anybody in the country. Like that version exists that gets into the bracket and wins a national championship. Then there's the other version that exists. And that's the version that they couldn't avoid themselves from, from being when they didn't need it the most. And I'm look, I'm just shocked that with that kind of team, that that other version existed more than once. So it makes you wonder why it's there three times this season. Yeah, no, Matt, we we can't solve it this morning. Uh, There's a disconnect. Uh, I mean, there was, I think there was one play on that final drive. Justin Dart had a receiver drop it. It probably didn't help that Trey Harris came back and got hurt. But I mean, he's got talent all over the field. And I mean, there just isn't really an excuse. Florida is an ascending team, and and listen, uh, Billy Napier deserves mucho credit. Um, but oh, oh, we, we weren't just talking about Ole Miss being a good SEC team. I mean, I sat with people Saturday morning. One said Ole Miss is the best team in the country. They're going to win the national championship. But that was not a stretch when, when they are playing a peak like they were against Georgia. So uh, it, it has to rest somewhere uh, at the top, and, and, and I blame Lane Kiffin. I know that sounds uh, like I'm just – uh, passing a few exit signs, but he ultimately is the head coach and he has to have his team in positions to win games when you're playing what a, uh, a, a five loss team. I mean, this yeah, was five play. and five. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, and, and so, I mean, uh, where, where else do you want to, yeah. I mean, I mean, Jackson Dart looked terrible on that final series, but at that point he was kind of in the 15th round and just being, you know, bloodied and bludgeoned. Yeah, and it, I, I was one of those in the game. We, Mo and I, I think we said on the broadcast Thursday night during our game that Ole Miss was one of those teams. It's like if you're IDing a team that's going to get in, because we penciled them, we're like, they're going to go to Florida, they're going to get the win, and then they're going to go beat the hell out of Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl. 10 and 2, Ole Miss, Lenz Kiffin's getting his dream. You don't have to play the conference championship, you're in. And we're sitting there saying, man, that team will beat anybody. Yeah. And now here we are. Sunday, November 24th, they're going to be out. And they're going to have a team yeah, that's, got a, that's got a healthy payroll that was a transfer portal dream. Lane Kiffin had the squad. And in a game, here's the irony of all of this. It's in a game at the place where people were connecting Lane Kiffin and the dots with Billy Napier. And Billy Napier, who's done an amazing job coaching this year, say what you want, gets the last laugh in this entire conversation. Yeah. And, and by the way, I know, I know a lot of people think, you know, we just throw that stuff up against the wall, but we weren't, I mean, there, there was a way for, for uh, forgetting what Florida did, but if Florida had just continued to lose and the thing had gotten out of control, remember in the second or third week in September, there were reports out of Florida that Napier was getting bought, bought out. Right. Uh, and, and I said to you uh, one of those mornings and you, I think you agreed that Lane Kiffin would be the likely choice and I think he would have taken it presuming uh, or assuming that Ole Miss was out of the playoffs. <laughs> and that's the irony. Uh, they're out of the playoffs now, but there's no job. And the guy that he was going to succeed just beat him. 
And, and I don't know what that means uh, because uh, Lane, Lane Kip is a really smart guy. Yeah. Um, he, he knows uh, this was his shot. Uh, and, I, and I'm sure if you're an Ole Miss fan, you say, oh, it's a, well, what do you mean? I mean, we can come back. I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, to me, uh, it's not that easy for Ole Miss to be the best team in the country, which I thought they were yesterday before that game. Yeah, yeah, and we, look, we taped this. It's 9.55 Sunday morning, so the Associated Press poll hasn't been released. The college football playoff rankings haven't been released because those get released Tuesday night. Could we sit here like on election night and map a path to victory for Ole Miss? Sure. Maybe, but the likelihood is not. So big picture, where does Ole Miss go from here after this roster and a schedule? I mean, you, you you do not you should not be losing to Kentucky. You just you just shouldn't. Where do they go from here? Well, I, I want to make it clear. I think Lane Kiffin is an excellent football coach. Yes, hundred percent. And and the the reasons and I don't know what they are. And you know, uh, people told me close to that program when I was there a few weeks ago that the one reason they were playing better against Georgia than they were against Kentucky that with, with so many free agents, uh, it takes a while. And finally, they got the rhythm. So there's just no excuse. Uh, I, I think I think you'll hear Lane Kiffin's name. I, I don't know if there'll be any legitimate openings this year, but I think at some point he's got to have to take a deep, long look. I almost went to Auburn. He would say to himself, "I thought about Florida. Um, do I do I continue here? Do I look to the NFL? I, I don't know, but I guarantee you uh, that L Lane Kiffin, uh, once he wraps up the Egg Bowl, will have to do some soul searching." Yeah, and I'm with you. We. We connect the dots quite a bit in studio <clears throat> because of who I sit next to of job openings. And I don't think this is getting boring, a stunner. Like, I mean, this, this marriage isn't going to happen again. I'm just talking trickle effect here. Let's just say Lincoln Riley, for some reason, got a job in the NFL. Right. Well, right. that means USC opens up and another job opens up and there's a, the connectivity of the, the domino. But, but again, Lane Kiffin's a really, really brilliant offensive mind. Lane Kiffin has put together a really, really good roster and they just didn't show up when they needed to most. And so no. Ole Miss likely out Florida. Congratulations, Billy Napier. I'm wondering if the Billy Napier um, situation ends up being like Kentucky a few years ago where Mark Stoops hadn't won in a long, long time. And they were, there was conversations about maybe him going and he built that into one of the more successful runs. Now I get it. Different programs, but example being, if you hang on to the coach maybe a little bit longer than you wanted to, maybe some good things come out of it. It appears that's where we're headed with Billy Napier. I might hurt a little.